So we start off with this unit on implicit differentiation. Implicit differentiation. What is implicit differentiation? Well, turns out all we've been doing up until today has been explicit differentiation, where we've been taking derivatives of explicit equations, like functions. All were explicit. Plug in an x, you get a y. y equals x squared plus 2x plus 3 is an explicit equation. But implicit equations, which are non-functions, where if we plug in an x, it's not easy to find uh, you know, a certain y, or we could have multiple y's. They have tangent slopes, and they have concavity, too. This is a situation where we have x's and y's equal to numbers, or x's and y's on both sides of the equation, where y is not easily solved for. Now, yes, you can solve for this, but we'll see some other equations where y is not easily solved. Okay? And these equations are, you know, the equations that kind of show things in our universe. Not all functions are, are what is universal. Here are some equations that we're going to look at today. x squared plus y squared equals 9 is just a circle. Okay? These are all the possible x, y solutions to x squared plus y squared equals 9, like 3, 0, 0, 3. 2 root 5, as well as 2 negative root 5. All of these solutions to this graph look like that. Okay? But we can have other things. We can have an ellipse that is moved to a certain location. We can rotate an ellipse. We can have something that creates the infinity symbol when you look at all the solutions. We can even have the thing that is in the back of all of our throats as an expression of x's and y. Uh, no. So you guys looked at the graphs of these in pre-cal, I believe. Well, now we are going to look at the slopes of the tangents to these. I will give you a point, and I'll ask you, hey, what's the slope of the tangent there? I'll give you a location and say, hey, what's the concavity of that function? What is the concavity of this thing in the back of our throat at a certain location, okay? So these are all the things that we will evaluate now. We won't have to graph them. That's actually less important now. Graphing is actually the hard thing to do, but we will be able to find equations of tangent lines, examine concavity, et cetera, et cetera. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, when I took the derivative of this explicit equation, what was I finding? Well, a lot of people, when they take the derivative of something like this, they forget the whole left side. They only worry about the right side, and they say, oh, the derivative is 2x plus 2. Well, that's correct. That is the derivative of the right side. However, we need this left side. And the derivative of y, we say, was y prime, or we said it was dy dx. Well, what we were finding is what dy dx is equal to. dy dx is instantaneous change of y over instantaneous change in x. We know change in y over change in x is slope. Instantaneous change in y over instantaneous change in x is tangent slope. So we use our rules to find the correct tangent slope generator function for that original equation. And then it was simple. We could find uh, my tangent slope at any location just by plugging in that x value into dy dx or y prime and getting my tangent slope, okay? Piece of cake. Well, we're going to be doing the same thing with these implicit equations. Our goal is to find dy dx equals for this. Okay, and we're going to start by kind of doing the same thing that we did for the previous equation. We're going to take the derivative with respect to x of both sides. Well, the derivative of x squared, I can do that. That's 2x. 
the derivative of 9, it's just a number, the derivative of a number is just 0. I can do that. But the derivative of y squared, this is new to me. And I'm like, I don't know, is it 2y? I don't know. Let's look into that further. We're going to come back to this x squared plus y squared equals 9 in a little bit. So maybe save some space for it. Maybe do the rest on the right side. Let's look at derivatives of things that are not x's, but take the derivative with respect to x of like y squared, which is what we were just talking about right here. Okay. Well, before we do that, let's recall that we said the derivative of y with respect to x was dy dx. Now, how did I get dy dx? It's like multiplication when we're dealing with this notation. We have like y over 1. The d gets multiplied by the y. The dx gets multiplied by the 1. You get dy dx. Okay? So that's important. The derivative of y, we say, is y prime. But we will be using dy dx uh, for this unit. Now, let's look at the derivative of y squared. I'm going to show you, and you won't have to do this when you're taking the derivative of y squared in the future. You can kind of go straight to the answer. But to show you what the derivative is, I'm going to take the derivative of this using the chain rule. What I'm going to do is put parentheses around the y and say this is a composition. This has an outside, which is some stuff being squared, and an inside, which is the y. Well, if I took the derivative of the outside, I know that this derivative was 2 times my stuff to the first power. The derivative of my inside, I know from here, is dy dx. So actually, when I take this derivative, I'd have 2 stuff times dy dx because I'm multiplying the derivative of the outside by the inside. And what's in here? The y. So actually, this is 2y dy dx. Okay. Let me show you with 3y to the fourth. Quickly using the chain rule, derivative of 3y to the fourth, I have an outside, which would be the 3 stuff to the fourth. My inside would be the y. This would give me 12 stuff cubed, and this would give me, again, dy dx. The derivative would be 12 stuff cubed times dy dx. What was the stuff? y. So this is 12y cubed dy dx. Now, without showing you the whole chain rule process, I can just tell you what the derivative of 6y is with respect to x. The derivative of 6y is 6 dy dx. So what do we notice? Yeah, it's just like what we're used to doing with x's, only we need a dy dx at the end. That's exactly right. You will take that with you. You won't have to use the chain rule in the future. You literally can say, oh, what's the derivative of y squared? Oops, I'm supposed to be highlighter. What is the derivative of y squared? Well, the derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of y squared will be 2y. But then make sure you multiply by dy dx. What's the derivative of 3y to the fourth? Well, it's 12y cubed dy dx. 6y. 6 dy dx. Okay? Same as with x's, just multiply by dy dx. So if I had some trig functions, like the cosine of y or the sine of 3y, you could find 
their derivatives with respect to x. Go. First one's easy. Second one, a little bit of a chain rule, making sure we remember the chain rule. and check those with your neighbor. It's really simple, so long as we remember how to take the derivatives of sine and cosine and take the derivative of a composition, sine of 3y. Yep. Here we can think of this as an outside, which is sine of, the inside, which is 3y. The derivative of sine is cosine, the derivative of 3y is 3 dy dx. So this would be cosine 3y times 3 dy dx. Yes, Miss Anarino. Of course. I could turn it into dy dx times 3 times cosine of 3y. This does not have to stay here. It can move anywhere. This can move anywhere. That can move anywhere. You know? As long as you're not moving it inside of the cosine. Yep, just up front, totally fine. Now, what's interesting, and you don't have to write this down, but another way to look at simple derivatives like x squared or the derivative of x is using the chain rule. And if you think about it, we could have an outside, which is the squared, and the inside is x. If I took the derivative, I could actually have 2x, and then using this multiplication technique, we'd have dx over dx. Now, why do we not need that? Because this is just 1. But it's the same idea as with dy dx. We can have it at the end if we wanted to, but it's unnecessary. It's redundant. This is just 1. That's why this is just 1. It works out. Okay? So, interesting to think of that that way. But now, let's go ahead and look at x squared plus y squared equals 9. We're able to take its derivative completely. We're able to find dy dx. So come back to this. We knew the derivative of x squared was 2x. The derivative of 9 is 0. Now the derivative of y squared we know is 2y dy dx. And that's great. There's my dy dx. That's what I'm trying to find. But again, it's going to be helpful if we have dy dx equals. And we have an expression where it's just my tangent slopes are equal to this. So the one thing we're going to have to do, which we're not used to doing, is we're going to have to solve for dy dx. Now, how do we solve for things? Well, using algebra, we're going to get dy dx by itself by removing the 2x and the 2y, making sure we remove the 2x that's being added by subtracting it, making sure we remove the 2y that's being multiplied by dividing. We're taking the inverse to find dy dx. So I can, and it's very important to remember to use algebra and to not just move things, I can subtract the 2x. Then I can divide, since this is all multiplication, by 2y. And I get dy dx is equal to, I can cancel these twos, negative x over y. Okay. Now, notice this derivative has x's and y's. We are not used to derivatives having x's and y's. We're used to them just having x's, and we can plug in an x, and we get a tangent slope. 
Well, this is an implicit derivative. Implicit meaning we have both x's and y's. What does that mean? It means we have to plug in not only x's, but we have to plug in points to get the derivative at those points. Must plug in x, y. Now, we looked at the graph of x squared plus y squared equals 9, that circle. We have a couple points that are obvious to us, like 3, 0, 0, 3. Let me get this out of the way. Well, I can find the tangent slope at 3, 0 or at 0, 3. I have to plug in both the x and the y. I plug in 3 and 0, I get negative 3 over 0. This is undefined. Okay, well, that's interesting. I plug in, let's say, 0, negative 3. That also works. I get 0 over negative 3. That's 0. We can also look at any other point that works. We said 2 root 5. I can plug in 2 and root 5. And I get negative 2 over root 5. Question? Yes. These have to be points that are on, that work in my original function. These are not random points. And it's not a function on the original expression, equation. 3, 0, that's on. X squared plus Y squared equals 9. 0, negative 3, that's on. 2 root 5, that's on. Okay? They're not just random points. I can't plug in 1, 3, because that won't be a point on the expression. Yes? So then, if you're finding, if you're plugging both X's and Y's, uh -huh. it's the derivative that you're finding is a Y value or an X value? So it's a tangent slope value. It's, like, oh, it's, it's the dy dx value. You could, but it would be a situation where it would be, you know, a non-function. could cross over itself. could have multiple x's and y's. And actually, it wouldn't look like a graph at all. It'd end up being a field, which we'll show you later in this class. Okay? But you don't know what that means. It's called like a slope field. We'll see that in the future. It's actually not that bad. It's very interesting. Now, look at the graph. Now, we won't be able to look at the graph for most of these questions because it's really, really tough to graph it unless you have a very, you know, powerful uh, computational device. If I looked at the point 3, 0, what is this tangent slope here? What does it look like? A vertical line, right? Are we comfortable seeing that the tangent slope is undefined? It's a number over 0? Yeah, we should, okay? That means there is some rise. There's no run to my tangent slope, so undefined. That's cool. What else can we see? At 0, negative 3, the tangent slope is 0. At 0, negative 3, look at the tangent slope. It's 0. At 2, root 5, it looks like this tangent slope is negative. Maybe it's close to negative a half or something, or negative 1. At 2 root 5, the tangent slope is negative 2 over root 5, which ends up being close to negative a half. Okay? So, boom, we're able to find the tangent slopes to these implicit equations. All right? Great. Let's start finding some tangent slopes, some dy dx's to some implicit equations. Let's start with x squared, y squared equals 4. Okay. I already did the first step with you, uh, for you, which is taking the derivative of everything. Now, let's pause before we start going into it. It's important to know that our rules still apply.
What do I mean by rules? I mean, this is a product, so I must use the product rule. Go ahead and take the derivative of x squared y squared equals 4 using the product rule when you're taking the derivative of x squared y squared. Also, don't forget the derivative of a number is 0. Now, make sure at least our first step is correct. The rest is just algebra. But you're fixing it. Okay. Good. Yep. Good. Excellent. Yep. You had too many dy dx's. Well, where are we putting it? Oh, in front of it, like that. No. Whenever we're taking the derivative of the y's, we need the dy dx next to it. So if I took the oh, derivative okay. of the x's, I don't want it there. So if it's okay, so I need it x the squared, option. derivative of x squared times y squared, I shouldn't have it there. But when it's the derivative of y squared times x squared, I need it there. So it would be 2y dy dx, because the derivative of y squared, we would think of like 2y and then add the dy dx. So same mistake here. The derivative of y squared would be 2y dy dx. No, I would subtract that, then divide that. But this this is the key step that you have, right? The rest is algebra that we'll go over. Yep, good. We good over here? Yep, excellent. Good. Yes, excellent. Perfect. All right, so a couple of us struggled with this product rule. We have to be very neat. And you'll start to notice we're going to do more and more of these. The work will get longer and longer and longer. We have to be neat. We have to be diligent. We have to make sure our x's look like x's and our y's look like y's. Because if a y looks like an x, everything's going to get screwed up. The derivative of x squared is 2x times y squared. This is the product rule. Derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second. This is when I have 2y dy dx times the first x squared. Don't forget the derivative of 4 is 0. So we have that. Now the rest is just moving things so that we have dy dx by itself. If you want to manipulate the 2yx squared and put that first and then dy dx after it, you can do that. Uh, whatever you want. I'm going to just subtract the 2xy squared from both sides. And I get 2y. Maybe you put the x squared in front. Maybe you don't. You don't have to. dy dx x squared is equal to negative 2xy squared. And then, since this is all multiplication, I can just divide all the terms that aren't dy dx. 2yx squared, giving me dy dx equals, now in this case, we can see that stuff cancels here. The 2s cancel, an x cancels, and a y cancels, giving my, uh, me a very simple derivative, negative y over x. Now, who can give me a point on my original function? 
Who said that? 2, 1. Perfect. 2, 1 works, right? 2 squared is 4. 4 times 1 is 4. So what is dy dx at 2, 1? Figure that out. Yeah, it's just negative one half. It's so simple in this situation. The dy dx at 2, 1, 2 is the x, 1 is the y, is negative one half. Now, I graph x squared, y squared equals 4. It looks like this. It's pretty cool. Well, at 2, 1, here's my tangent slope looks to be negative one-half. Now notice, I'm not going to say, what is my tangent slope when x equals 2? Why wouldn't I say, what is the tangent slope when x equals 2? Because I have two different points. It's like, what are you talking about? Are you talking about 2, 1? Are you talking about 2, negative 1? Okay, so we will be giving you points to plug in because there are lots of possibilities everywhere. Okay, good. Let's do another one. Now, we need to be very careful with this guy. couple things we need to be careful about. This negative sign. Please be careful. You need to either bake that negative into the x or leave it out and put parentheses around the derivative of xy. I like to bake. Not in real life. But in, in this situation, <laughs> I like to put the x as a negative x. And I like to think of that as being my first piece of my product. Because this is a product. I need to use the product rule. Now, you could leave out, but if you left out, make sure you have minus and then in parentheses, your entire derivative, f prime g plus g prime f. Okay? Whatever you want to do, just make sure we are careful and we distribute that negative to the derivative. Go ahead and stop after you take the derivative. Stop after our first line. And let's make sure we're all on the same page before we solve for dy dx. This is in a dangerous location. Yep. Okay. okay. Well, which way did you do it? Did you do the derivative of y times x plus the derivative of x times y? I mean, ah, product. Product rule. Careful with the xy. This xy is a product. We need to use the product rule for this xy. Either treat it as negative xy or minus the derivative of xy. Why is it x squared? I don't know. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> All right, good. We can do three. So I'm I'm afraid that this is well this technically is wrong the way it's written because you'd have to distribute this dy dx into both where it shouldn't be with both it should just be it with just, one of it them. It just multiplied like 
by it. That's what I was trying to do, but it got confusing for me. But which like, piece is it? The, the negative x should be multiplied by it, but not the negative y. Why is that? Because the derivative of x is 1 times y. So it's just 1 times y. Okay. Or it's the derivative of negative x, which is negative 1 times y, which is negative 1y. There's no dy dx with that. But then you plus the derivative of y, which is dy dx times negative x. So this is here. Don't put this in parentheses. It should be that, and then that is separate. Good. Now don't forget. Okay, you're good. You're all set. The rest is solving. We'll get to. I got to the computer. Yep. Plus. Yep. Well, we'll go from there. That's a good start. Okay. Ready. Here we go. The derivative of x squared is 2x. Good. Now let's talk about the derivative of xy. I'll show you down here. Some of us were uh, making a mistake here. It is a product. The derivative of x is 1 times y. The derivative of y is dy dx. We're adding these two things together. This is the derivative of xy. 1 times y plus dy dx times x. Now, I like to bake in the negative. So I'll have the derivative of negative x, which is negative 1. I'm adding this. Times y plus the derivative of y, which is dy dx, times negative x. That's me baking in the negative with the x. Now, plus the derivative of y squared, which is 2y dy dx, and the derivative of 9 is 0. All right? If we have this, we're good. However, we have two dy dx's in two locations. We need to solve for dy dx. How are we going to do this? Well, let's start by getting everything that doesn't have a dy dx in its term, getting it out of here. So let's remove the 2x and the negative y. So get rid of your stuff without a dy dx. Subtract the 2x, add the y to the right side. Now, I have dy dx times negative x plus 2y dy dx is equal to negative 2x plus y. I need to solve for just dy dx. Who's got an idea of what I could do to do that? That's Peterman. Yes. It is being multiplied... In each of my terms, we're adding two terms together. We can factor out the dy dx. So it's important. What we're going to do is get all of our dy dx terms on the one side, all of our terms without a dy dx onto the other side, factor out the dy dx, and then the last step is just like we did before. It's going to be divide. Giving me, and your order may be different, your signs may be different, but as long as we have versions of one another's, we're fine. Now, I'm here. I got negative 2x plus y or y minus 2x. I got negative x plus 2y. I got same as 2y minus x. 
can, I'm used to simplifying these things. Can I just go ahead and just take that two, cancel that out? Why not? Yeah, because I have addition. Because of the addition, if I wanted to simplify, I'd have to divide everything by the two. So I can't do that. I can't cancel these x's there. Because I'd have to divide everything by an x. Which I could do if I wanted to, but I don't think this is looking any better than what I originally had. So I don't want to do that. So it turns out, that's it. That's my dy dx. Leave the negative there. We're done. If I had a point on my original expression, I could plug in that point and find its tangent slope. Uh, an easy one would be like 0, 3 or something like that. And I could plug in 0, 3. I'd get uh, 3, 6, which is a half. Okay? All right, let's try another one. This one is really similar to the last one. However, we got some numbers. And what I'm going to do is set this equal to an X and Y that's going to be on the right side. Same deal, same process. Take the derivative first. But we'll have dy dx on the left side, and we're going to have dy dx on the right side. Move your dy dx's to be on one side. Move your terms without dy dx on to the other side, and then just solve for dy dx like we get, did in the previous problem. Okay, go ahead and tackle this guy. Now, do that first line. After you do the first line, look up on the board to make sure that your derivative that is not solved for is correct. Make sure your first line is the same as my first line. After you are sure that you're good, then the rest becomes the solving. Go one step at a time. Be careful, be neat, make sure we're subtracting, make sure we're adding, make sure we're keeping track of every single term that we have. And we're solving for dy dx. Again, we have the product rule here. So it's 2x just squared. So this would just be 4x. Mm -hmm. 3x, yep. Distribute that negative. 4y, 1 plus 2y dx. Yep. Okay, now solve for dy dx. Now, 
I have two DYDXs on the left side. I have one on the right side. I'm going to move this one to be on the left side. If you move these two to be on the right side, that's fine. Your answer actually is going to be the same as my answer, just going to be the opposite of everything, uh, which ends up being the same thing. It's just multiplied the top and the bottom by negative 1. So let's see. I am going to subtract a dy dx from both sides. And I'm also going to subtract a 4x and add a 3y to both sides. Now, if you're not comfortable doing this all in one step, take your time. I'll tell you right now, your homework is not long in terms of the amount of questions, but you will be able to see that every question takes a lot of space. There's a lot of opportunities to make mistakes. Okay, Important to know, what is being multiplied? What's being added? That's why I like addition. That those negative signs sometimes mess me up. I always turn subtraction into add the opposite. I find it's helpful for me. It might not be helpful for you. I'm ready to factor out a dy dx. I have negative 3x minus 4y minus 1 plus negative 4y plus negative 1. You may have the same thing, just in a different order. And if I want to make this plus a negative, I can. Then my final step is to divide by the 3x minus 4y plus negative 1. on both sides, and then I'm good. If you move your dy dx to the right side, and all the stuff without onto the left side, you have the same answer as me, just the opposites of everything. It's the same exact answer, just multiply the top and the bottom by negative one. That is totally street legal. Okay, and of course the order of any of this addition and subtraction uh, is fine, so long as your signs are correct. So make this plus a negative and you're gonna move it. Any questions? This was a pretty tough one here. Okay, now what can we do with these dy dx's? Well, again, we can find tangent slopes at particular points. We could also find an equation of a tangent line. Now, what do you have to do? Well, we did it back in unit three. You just need to find the slope and Use the point, you're given the point in this situation, which is great, in my favorite equation of a line. Well, y1 is going to be negative 3, x1 is going to be 1. My slope will be dy dx at 1, 3. 1, negative 3. Go ahead and find dy dx for that uh, expression at 1, negative 3. You should get 11 thirds, positive 11 thirds as your slope.
range and end up getting 11 thirds as their slope. Make sure you solve for dy dx correctly. What? Why do you have infinity? This is x. Oh, yeah, that's x. Okay, got it. Gotcha. Take the derivative of this. Find dy dx, plug in 1, negative 3. That's how you find the tangent over the theta here. Yeah. Yeah, right? That's what we've been doing, is finding dy dx for this implicit equation. Oh my god, it looks like it's going to be right. Let's have a look at it. Yes, but that x disappeared on you. Yeah, so that should be a 3x right there. Yep. That goes where m goes. That's it. That's your equation of your tangent line. You need a point and a slope. Slope is from dy dx. Point is given to you. Why did I get negative 11 over 9? Because you made a mistake. Where? You plugged in negative 3 for y when that's, oh, that's x. x. Oopsies. A simple mistake to fix. Taking in that negative 3, I get negative 3y plus dy dx times negative 3x equals Zero, yep. Just like we put it in uh, previous units. Subtract 2x, I add 3y. I then have dy dx times negative 3x is equal to negative 2x plus 3y. And then divide by negative 3x. And then plug in 1 and negative 3. So this is negative 2 plus negative 9 over negative 3. I get positive 11 thirds. So again, equation of a tangent line. All you need is a point and a slope. Here is my slope. I don't know why I wrote it so small. There is my slope. This is yes. <laughs> this is my slope. This is my point. Why? You're not liking me today. Y minus y one ends up being y plus three is equal to my slope times x minus x1, okay? Sweet, so we can do that. What else can we do with these things? Well, we can find locations of horizontal and vertical tangents. Interesting location. Why don't we find the x equals or the y equals locations of our horizontal and vertical tangents. Go! We know a horizontal tangent is when dy dx is 0 over a number. We know a vertical tangent is when dy dx is a number under uh, over 0.
This is the equation for the thing at the back of your throat. You are finding the horizontal and vertical tangent locations for the thing at the back of your throat. Zero for horizontal tangents, number under zero for vertical tangents. There are two Y's, there's one X. A shoe. Catch. Now we want to make sure we have a number over zero. We don't want zero over zero. And in this situation, I get when x is zero, I'll have a horizontal tangent. When y is negative 5 and 1, I'll have my vertical tangent. Any questions or issues with this? Now, let's confirm our answers are correct. Let's look at our graph. Where do we have a horizontal tangent? Well, right here. What is the distinguishing characteristic? X is zero right here. Where do I have vertical tangents? Well, here, 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 and here. Well, guess what? That's when Y is negative five and when Y is one. Pretty cool. However, I just asked you for the X coordinate or the Y coordinate. What if I asked you for the XY coordinates? What would you have to do, Mr. Silvera? Plug them in where? You'd have to plug them into the original. Now, for this situation, if this is our expression, if I plugged in 0 for X to find the Y, I'd have to solve one-third y cubed plus 2y squared minus 5y equals negative 4. 
something that I would not be able to do by hand, okay? And if I tried to plug in negative 5 and 1, maybe for 1 it's going to be easy, but for negative 5 it's not going to be easy. So for certain situations, you will be asked just the x equals or the y equals. But for other situations, you will be asked, what are the x, y locations? So find your x equals, find your y equals, and then plug it into your original. Go. Yes, Ms. Anarino. Yep. Yep. Horizontal tangent is equal to zero. Zero over a number is zero. Vertical tangent is undefined, but it's really a number, a rise under a zero run. So numerator zero, horizontal, denominator zero, vertical. Take that, plug it in there. We actually find there are two locations of horizontal tangents, and there are two locations of vertical tangents. Find those specific x, y locations. Take those and plug them in here to find the y's that go with that x, to find the x's that go with that y. Okay? And to the original, yes. The original function will help you find points on that original equation. It's not a function. Plug those into your original to find their corresponding x's and the y's. Yes, you plug this in here first. Find the y's that go with that. Plug in that. Next, find the x's that go with that. Okay? So the next y, so just plug in like the x for that on the y. Yep. And then the other. Yep. Now, eventually, after practice, you'll be able to go from your first derivative straight what dy dx is equal to. I would advise you not to do this until you practice. Okay? You could go straight from here to here after you kind of understand how you're moving things and how you're factoring and how you divide it. Totally doable. Don't do it unless you know what you're doing. Now, horizontal. A at x equals 1. 
vertical. I get y equals negative 2. You're not done yet. You need to take that value to find the y's that go with that value. To find points on expressions, plug in that x, and in this situation, we'll have to solve for y. So I plug in the x, so I get 4 plus y squared minus 8 plus 4y plus 4 equals 0. And I keep going. If I plugged in negative 2, I'd get, and this is for y, 4x squared plus 4 minus 8x plus negative 8 plus 4 equals 0. The 4, the negative 8, and the 4 will cancel each other out, just leaving me with y squared plus 4y equals 0. I factor out the y. I get my two y's that go with x equals 1. 0 and negative 4. I plug in the negative 2 for y, the 4, the negative 8, and the 4 will make 0. I have 4x squared minus 8x equals 0. I can factor out a 4x. And I get the two x's that correspond with a y-coordinate of negative 2. Now that is somewhat satisfying, but what makes it really satisfying is if we actually saw that those are the correct locations. I have graphed this. There. This is 4x squared plus y squared minus 8x plus 4y plus 4. It is a ellipse that is kind of shifted over. Where do I have a horizontal tangent? At the top, at 1, 0, at the bottom, at 1, negative 4. My vertical tangents here at 0, negative 2, and at 2, negative 2. So that's fantastic. Okay. Uh, one more heads up. We won't really go through the entire problem. If you're asked to find the derivative of this guy, the key is actually not using the chain rule. I'll show you why you don't have to write it down. Because if I use the chain rule, I'd get 2x squared plus y squared times 2x plus 2y dy dx. 2y dy dx is equal to 2x minus 2y dy dx. Now, here's the problem with that. This dy dx is trapped in this multiplication of two terms. If I tried to get rid of this by dividing, I'm the lefty. I don't know why I'm doing this. Well, then this dy dx would end up being trapped. So that doesn't work. Uh, can't square root something because it would change what I would have. So. Actually, I'd want to distribute first. And make this x to the fourth plus 2x squared y squared plus y to the fourth is equal to x squared minus y squared. And then take the derivative of that. You'd have separate dy dx's in separate terms without multiplication. When a dy dx is in multiplication, of multiple terms, that's when things can get complicated. Possibly. Sometimes it's not super complicated if there isn't dy dx's on both sides. 
Uh, now, your homework, you will find odd number questions so that you can check your answers and only so that you can check your answers. We're moving back in time to chapter two. And what you will notice is they use y prime. Let me just snip this. So they use y prime in their derivative. Y prime is dy dx. I don't want you to use y prime because when we move into the next lessons in this unit, you will find that we will be using dy dx, dy dt, dx dt, dz dt, dz dx. And if we're using prime, things might be conflicted in our brains. So I would like you to notice that this is y prime and understand that it's dy dx. Okay? And they will simplify the derivatives completely. Notice, like, you see a lot of stuff here. You think you can simplify it, but you can't because there's addition. Okay? All right. Thank you for working hard today.